The FNM deputy admits to tension between her and the party's leader. Loftus Roker fires back at the Prime Minister. The Social Services Minister responds to a fellow PLP MP plus crabs crawling at LPIA. We've got those stories and a whole lot more tonight. I'm Bonnie Toot and NB12 starts now. Topping news tonight amid rampant speculation. She has her sights set on the top post in the free national movement. FNM Deputy Leader Loretta Butler Turner admits her political aspirations have created tension between her and FNM leader Dr. Yuri Menes. However, she suggested no one should feel entitled to certain things and there will be other challengers. I like to be really honest. I think it has created tension. Um, and I think that people, you know, must realize that nothing is in life we're entitled to. Days after FNM leader Dr. Hubert Minnis insisted he is not concerned about any challenges for his position, his deputy Loretta Butler Turner suggested no one should feel entitled to anything. In fact, she says it is very likely some FNM members will emerge to challenge Minnis at the ninth hour. Certainly, uh, there are other people that will probably come out of the woodwork at the last minute. But, you know, I try to be frank with Bahamians. A lot of people have asked me. It has long been speculated that Minnis could face competition from his deputy leader and deputy chairman, Dr. Dwayne Sands. However, Butler Turner only recently confirmed it's something she's seriously considering. When pressed on what tension she has felt since then, Butler Turner said it's little things she has picked up on. If one has a position and they know that there are contenders, then it's not, they're not going to make the road easier for the contender, if I put it to you like that. So, yeah, yeah, there'll, there'll be challenges. But, I mean, there's nothing insurmountable about the tensions that I experience. Um, <clears throat> I see it coming from the opposition, the governing side as well. So, obviously, there must be something that I'm doing that uh, certainly is making them all to decide that they want to attack me on different levels. But I will just continue to do the best that I can. And if they're insecure with that, well, tough for them. We also asked the FNM deputy if she supports Dr. Menace's declaration that he is a proven leader. The fact that he carries the title of leader and leads this organization, he is a little leader. There's no disputing that. However, the Long Island Member of Parliament says if the Bahamian people wish for her to take a shot at becoming this country's first female prime minister, she would not walk away from that opportunity. She says she would likely make a decision by the party's next convention. When we are certain as to when there will be a convention in our organization, at that time, I'll be able to make a very clear decision as to whether or not this is something I'm going to do. So whenever that time frame is, that is when I'll be able to make a better determination. Regardless of what happens, Butler Turner insisted that for her, politics isn't about power. Politics for me is about serving the Bahamian people, serving my country. If people would like to have me elevated to a higher level, I will rise to that occasion. If not, I will make my exit and do what the people desire. Prime Minister Perry Christie has thus far failed to show strong leadership and no amount of skirting around the core issues at hand will change that fact. That strong statement coming from former Progressive Liberal Party Minister A. Loftus Roker, who is firing back at Christie's response to Roker's criticism of his decision to ignore the results of last year's gambling referendum. Asked recently to respond to Roker's charge that he should resign for wasting more than $1 million of the people's money on a failed referendum, Christie suggested there is some long-standing and deep-rooted dislike between him and the former minister. Now, Roker is challenging Christie to explain. He also said that his original comments were not a personal attack on the prime minister, but the views of a nationalist concerned about the direction the country is headed under Christie's leadership. 
More than 100 Nassau Village residents have sought social assistance between January and June of this year. That's according to Social Services Minister Melanie Griffin, who said she felt compelled to respond to Nassau Village MP Dion Smith's assertion that his constituents aren't feeling this government. Dana Smith reports. Responding to Nassau Village MP Dion Smith today, the Social Services Minister said it is unthinkable and surprising that families in Nassau Village would go to bed hungry. She explained Social Services has centers around New Providence that offer assistance and she is advising those in need to seek help. Persons who reside in Nassau Village, the Fox Hill Center would be the place for them to go if they are in need, you know, and that um, Certainly, uh, there's no need for children and to be going, you know, and families to be going to bed hungry because uh, they can seek assistance at that center and social services would be happy to, to assist. In the House of Assembly last week, Deputy House Speaker Dion Smith said his time as MP for Nassau Village has been a long and painful trek through the darker side of Bahamian poverty. He said too many of his constituents go home to a house where children are crying from hunger. He said his constituents believe the government does not appreciate the real status of poverty in that area. Griffin said so far this year, more than 100 people from Nassau Village have sought help from the Fox Hill Center for Emergency Food Assistance. She said although that number is pretty average, officials note it's a service quite a bit of people have recently sought. Mary inquiries had indicated that between um, January to now, um, from that area, about, there, about 100 persons who had received what we call emergency food assistance. That does not take into account though the permanent food assistance program or the temporary which is like just a monthly like if you in need for like three months, six months, short term. That's a short term one. Um, we have had um, quite a bit of emergency food assistance and like I say it's for short term. In fact it's just for immediate assistance really so that means people just walking in and saying look I need assistance that's what that's all about. Griffin said she just wanted to address Smith's comments and let his constituents as well as other Bahamians know there is help. It certainly is surprising to know that with all of these avenues that we have available you know and so it could just be um, certainly that people do not know you know, because no matter how much you publicize it, and we do have all of our centers, you know, are very much used. Griffin added if Smith has any specific names of those in need of assistance, she would ask him to forward them to her so she can ensure they get the help they need. Social services centers can be found in Fox Hill, Wolf Road, Robinson Road, and the Pitt Road area. Reporting for NB12, I'm Dana Smith. And Island Lux CEO Sebas Bastian took a swipe at gaming board chairman Dr. Andre Rollins over his suggestion that web shops are fleecing Bahamians by the slot machine game known as spinning. Bastian said in a statement this unsubstantiated allegation is very insulting and surprising, coming from a representative of the gaming board that at this stage of the process should understand just how web shops work. He said that over the last 40 years, the web shop industry was built on integrity experience, loyalty, and the trust of patrons. While contributing to the budget debate in the House of Assembly last week, Rollins said without laws to govern the conduct of web shops, unregulated slot play is likely exposing Bahamian players to rates of winning well below that which is permissible under the regulations governing slot play in our regulated hotel-based casinos. When MB12 returns, government to learn the cost of national health insurance next month, but it may be months before Bahamians do, so stay with us. We are fixing our kitchen. Building an addition. Paying tuition. We are coming home. Switching banks can sometimes be complicated, but not at Commonwealth Bank. We want you to come home, and we'll make it easy for you. When I switch to Commonwealth Bank, they helped me consolidate all of my bills, and with one low interest rate, they were able to lower my payments and make life easy again. Switch to Commonwealth Bank now and take advantage of consolidation loan options, like no payments for up to 60 days. We asked. And we listened. Commonwealth Bank, it's what we have in common. 
KFC Nassau is seen green. Garden fresh greens in our new salads. Made with all white meat chicken, these are salads done right. Try the classic chicken Caesar salad or the new original recipe salad. Tender original recipe chicken. Premium greens, cherry tomatoes, carrots, and cranberries with our own original recipe dressing. They're full of the great KFC flavor you love. Only at KFC Nassau. Salads have never tasted so good. We'll be with you through new beginnings and sunset endings. Through toil and many tears. Through the joys and many fears. For all of life's ever-changing moments, trust J.S. Johnson Insurance Agents and Brokers for all of your insurance needs. J.S. Johnson Insurance Agents and Brokers, giving you peace of mind. Organizing your finances to achieve your future financial goals may seem like solving a puzzle at times. Let Leno help you find your financial solution to a comfortable retirement make college possible, achieve your financial goals, and grow your savings safely and smartly. Visit us on the second floor Pineapple Place Burnett Road or telephone us at 396-3225. Leno, bridging the gap to your present and future goals. Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich and Frosty's sweet. Just give me one bacon it up, because I want all the meat. Hot baked potato with broccoli and cheese. An apple pecan salad with water cheese. Let me get that $3.99. Watch it real tight. We're open for you from 7 a.m. to midnight. Wendy's, you know when it's real. Fine Threads is the place to shop for all your men's clothing. From casual to formal wear, we've got you covered. Choose from brand names like Jordan Craig, PJ Mark, John Adam, and more. Looking good is never more affordable. Drop by one of our four convenient locations in Nassau or check out our online store at FineThreads.com where shopping is made even easier. Fine Threads, for the man with good taste. But say, Lampkin, I got some beautiful glass mosaic tile up by me, what is not only beautiful to behold, but what is strong as ox. Look at these. You could use these as, as backsplash. You could use them as countertop. <laughs> you can even build a whole wall out of them. As a matter of strict fact, pin the build one whole house out of some of them. Yeah. I will now go into the glass house that Pinda has built for me while he throws stones at me, which, 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 in, which in effect does away with that saying, people who live in glass houses, Shouldn't throw stones. Pin, is he ready? Is he ready, Ski King? Let her go, Daddy O! <laughs> Pin, Pin the tile sale, where everything is on sale, even the glass tile. Sale runs June 16th through July 4th. Welcome back. The government expects to have an idea of how much national health insurance will cost taxpayers when Costa Rican accounting firm Sanagest International submits its report next month. However, National Insurance Minister Shane Gibson insists that figure will not be released to the public before its January 2016 implementation, noting it's an ongoing process. National health insurance comes uh, uh, right now is being financed by national insurance. We have no intention of releasing piecemeal what it's costing along the way. Once we implement it fully, yeah. once we implement it fully, then we will release everything. We don't want to release it piecemeal because we won't know the final costing until it actually happens. Right. And so it will be, be premature for us to really start releasing figures prior to the implementation of national health insurance. Okay. But we would know, of course, along the way what it's costing, but that information will be released to the public in due course. Under the previous Christie administration, NHI was estimated to cost $235 million annually. However, Health Minister Dr. Perry Gomez says the cost goes up each year. Despite current financial constraints and criticism over increased government borrowing, Gibson says the Christie administration will find the money to fund NHI. Everything we do right now concerning finance is a challenge. But those things that are important to us, we'll find a way to make it happen and we'll prioritize and, and get those things done. Officials from Sanagest have been in the Bahamas since April to come up with cost and determine what is needed for NHI implementation. Despite mounting criticism over its failure to meet self-imposed deadlines in the past, Gomez says he is confident government will meet the January 2016 target date. That deadline, we 
feel very, I feel very comfortable about. The program has been proposed as a means of providing universal access to affordable health care for Bahamians. There is still no date in sight for the long-awaited opening of Princess Margaret Hospital's critical care block. However, Managing Director of the Public Hospitals Authority, Herbert Brown, says they will soon begin recruiting staff for the multi-million dollar facility. This, he says, is a key step. We are very pleased with the progress of the critical care block so far. Um, it is fair to say that based on where we are, we feel very comfortable. Uh, in the next several weeks, we will begin a process to recruit the technical and support staff for the critical care block, which is a critical part of opening the critical care block. Brown said they have also reached an agreement with CIBC First Caribbean Bank for a $35 million loan to purchase equipment for the facility. The content, as the minister talked about in Parliament uh, during his budget contribution, uh, that the content of the agreement with the First Caribbean International Bank has now been agreed. And so that process will move on with respect to the procurement of the equipment. But we are focused on trying to ensure that when the critical care block is open, that we are satisfied that the Bahamian people will benefit from it. The critical care block was initially scheduled for completion nearly a year ago. The $100 million facility will feature a new central sterile department, 18 recovery beds, 20 private ICU rooms, and 48 neonatal intensive care unit beds.